Hello everyone. You know I have the Celestron Edge HD 11 inch telescope, uh, the Celestron um, Cassie Grain telescope. And one of the features of this scope is you can make it into a hyperstar. Now originally it's an F10 ratio, which is really good for the planets, but it's not so good for deep space objects. You want at least a, down to an F7, but how about F1.9? Well, today, finally, in the mail, came my Arizona hyperspace lens for the HD 11 inch. And this will take the F10 down to an F1.9. So let's take a look, see how it came in. And opening up the package, comes with a nice carrying case inside the package. And lifting it out uh, of the box. The carrying case itself is a good packing case, nice and sturdy. And inside is the Hyperstar, foamly packed nicely. And uh, in the package itself, let's see what we got here. A little plastic bag, and there it is right there. This is going to attach not to the back of the camera, but to the front of the camera. And the way it does that is through this end here, and this attaches to my camera. So let's try that first. Now, uh, the camera itself attachment is right here, and that attaches to the uh, Canon camera right here. But uh, first of all, I got to take this portion of the Canon camera off to make the attachment. So that's easy enough to do. It's just swapping lenses. You take that off, and you put it on basically like so and it clicks on in eventually there it goes click and uh, what about if I want to use a filter here you go the, you unscrew the attachment itself from the adapter to the camera there's about 20 turns here so it's it's a, a good good fit it's not going to wobble or anything there it comes off there you can see the lens itself. I'm going to put that down right now. And uh, I didn't bring the filter. Anyway, the filter goes right in here. And it just screws in inside there. You can put one or two filters. You can attach double filters if you want. It attaches inside the camera itself. And then you um, put the lens back on. If you want to do this before you put the hyperspace lens on the hyperstar lens on the um, corrector plate of the telescope you can see there's several turns in that's snug you don't want to make it too tight now the next step is to take this portion off right here again numerous turns but when it comes off there you go this also becomes a holder for the secondary mirror that I'm going to take off of the uh, uh, edge 11 inch um, telescope and from there I'll replace the secondary with this device here the hyperstar and that'll change the focal ratio from an f10 to an f1.9 all right let's take this apart first I found it easiest to take all the accessories and any weight off the camera so it's not so bad with this telescope here it's not that heavy that guy though that's a different story you want the lightest possible weight to be lifting up and particularly lifting up over your shoulders okay here we go Okay, wow, that's the fastest I ever got this thing put on. Make sure it's snug. Of course, the last thing you want to do is have that telescope slip off while you're putting other stuff on. We're going to balance it a little bit later 
after I put the Hyperstar on it. All right. Now the next thing I want to do is open up the Hyperstar so I can have a container for the secondary mirror. What I'm going to do is I'm going to unscrew this right here. That's going to hold the secondary mirror. Now the secondary mirror Ah, that's off. And just lift this out. There's no turning. Just lift it out. There's a little notch right there. And there's your secondary mirror. All right, put the mirror. See, there's a notch on here with a notch on here. You line the two up, and it slips right in. And then you take that little lock that was on the edge and you screw it onto here, yeah, like that. Now the secondary mirror is protected. The next thing I want to do is, I don't know what I'm going to do. How does this slip in? Okay, it slips right in. All right. In, find the threads. I'll slip in there somehow. There it goes. Now you don't want to tighten it too tight, and you don't want to pull on it either. Lot of turns. It's getting there. I'm not going to put it on tight. I'm just going to get it just to where it almost is done threading, and that's it. I'm going to leave it alone. If I want to reposition the camera, I can by loosening these three screws here, but that's fine right now. This is the first time. This is going to be a test tonight, so I'm just going to leave it like it is. Now. I have to balance the camera and the telescope. Let's do that. It's all a balancing act now. Right there. Make sure it's tight. Okay, I'm ready to go. The only problem with the Hyperstar on the, on the uh, scope is once you have it on, you can't put the lens cap on. So I'm going to have to cover it up with something for now. I got about another, uh, about an hour and a half before it gets dark. Well, I have the Starzona Hyperstar attached to the telescope. I screwed it all the way in at first and I couldn't achieve focus. But I found out with all those turns uh, on the Hyperstar itself, if I unturned it, there was still plenty of uh, connection uh, and the spacing was just far enough out so that I could achieve focus with a little bit of play in between. So hence, I'm in focus. Now I'm pointing to the southwestern sky. I'm shooting at M8 and M20, that's the Lagoon Nebula and the uh, Triffid Nebula. And I gotta hurry because the full moon, almost full moon, the waxing gibbous moon, is coming up on the other side of the trees and beginning to lighten up the sky. But right now I'm shooting at ISO 100 at 40 seconds. That's about the limit. I didn't put any 
uh, light pollution filters on the uh, system as I forgot to bring out the filters as you saw. Well, cheers. Here's the display, what I'm getting right now. You can see uh, M8 in the upper left and M20 dimly lit in the lower right. My tracking is somewhat okay. I have it really amplified, so that's a, a plus or minus four arc seconds from the top to the bottom of that. So I'm uh, getting some decent tracking on my uh, system right now. But uh, there you go. I'm taking 40 second frames. And that just finished up one. Going on to the next one. I'm shooting for about 100 frames or so. See what happens. Catch you later.